Welcome to EuroPCR 2016. It's my pleasure to discuss with you valvular heart interventions and heart failure topics uh, during this Congress. And I'm happy to introduce uh, two experts uh, in the field, Werner Brendergast from St. Thomas Hospital in London and Didier Cheche from Clinic Pasteur in uh, Toulouse. Without doubt, uh, valvular heart interventions and particularly transcatheter aortic valve implantation has been center stage uh, during this uh, course. And Bernard, let me ask uh, you, uh, with, uh, address you with the first question. Tavi has been subject of uh, the great uh, debate. Uh, can you summarize for us what were the highlights of uh, this uh, discussion and the outcome of uh, the discussion, particularly with the surgical colleagues? So the, the great debate provided us the opportunity to reflect on the recently emerging results of the Partner 2A trial, which very clearly demonstrated the equivalence of TAVI with surgical aortic valve replacement in intermediate risk patients. Arguably the patients that we are already treating in Europe, but very good to receive the confirmatory randomized control trial evidence to support our practice. And the great debate provided a, a very animated, exciting opportunity to discuss in a combative format those findings with our surgical colleagues. I think it's a difficult call to say who won the debate, but I think it's very clear that there was a, a, a very warm reception from the PCR community for this concept of a, the growing role of TAVI in, in our patient cohorts. And also the, uh, the concluding message that these uh, these implications for practice need to be delivered in a controlled manner using an all-embracing heart team approach. So thank you, Bernard. I, I think without doubt there has been great progress in the field of transcatheter aortic valve implantation. Didi, what do you think are the main ingredients which made TAVI so safe and reproducible to allow now the discussion to go into lower risk uh, patients? So uh, we've seen uh, during uh, this uh, beautiful meeting several uh, live transmissions uh, just identifying and showing how reproducible TAVI procedure is now and we can go really for a streamlined uh, procedure and we've seen that the devices are smaller so in terms of vascular complication it's uh, safer for the patient. We've also seen uh, that uh, deployment and placement of the devices is more precise now so uh, really the final result is more predictable and all these ingredients make the procedure safer for the patients and uh, we have seen that through those outstanding uh, live transmissions. Yeah. So tremendous progress uh, due to innovation in uh, the device uh, sector. Let me turn to a uh, related topic, which is uh, mitral valve uh, interventions. Some say mitral valve interventions may be even uh, more common than uh, transcatheter aortic valve uh, implantation. What was new, what was discussed uh, during Euro PCR 2016 as it relates to mitral valve uh, replacement technology? So we recognize that the mitral valve is a much more challenging entity. And I think we all accept that it's going to be a longer journey than the, the TAVI explosion. But nevertheless, there has been very important innovation and progress reported at this meeting. We are now approaching the 100th transcatheter mitral valve replacement, for example, across a, a range of devices. And although there are some bumps in the road and some lessons to be learned as we progress, there is no doubt that the, the combination of industry, biotechnology and clinicians is leading the way forward. Similarly, we have percutaneous mitral valve repair techniques the edge-to-edge -edge repair is very firmly established in Europe now as a, as a guideline recommended therapy and there are many alternative approaches emerging in a very competitive and exciting arena. So also lots of innovation but uh, maybe less clear which route we are going to take, uh, whether more mitral valve replacement or mitral valve uh, repair, certainly something we will uh, follow in uh, the future. Uh, Didi, let me address uh, one other issue and that was uh, the uh, topic of heart failure as it relates to interventional uh, cardiovascular medicine. What were the main messages in innovation in this field? So we've seen uh, during this Congress several sessions uh, trying to uh, uh, explain how interventional cardiology can help the patients uh, to deal with their heart failure symptoms. And we've seen some new concepts and very interesting as for example this uh, treatment for preserved 
uh, ejection fraction heart failure. Uh, for example, the AASD devices that generate a shunt, a, left, a right to left shunt, just to decrease the symptoms of the patients. And there are several devices that achieve that goal. And it's really interesting and extremely exciting to see that new devices are coming, uh, tackling the issue of heart failure. And uh, 2016, was the start of this aspect of interventional cardiology, but I'm sure that in the future, we're gonna see more and more sessions and devices uh, uh, addressing that issue. Thank you, Didier. So just uh, to sum up, I think what we have uh, seen is lots of innovation in the fields of uh, valvular heart disease and uh, heart failure interventions. It's clear to say that transcatheter aortic valve uh, implantation has uh, uh, assumed a center stage and enters routine clinical practice, becomes more and more PCI-like procedure. As it relates to mitral valve interventions, I think we are still early in, the, uh, in its infancy. We still need to make more progress, but there is exciting technology both on the replacement and repair side. And finally, uh, the intersection with heart failure is a very important one where we try to address the issue of uh, patients with failing left uh, ventricles. Thank you very much.